Wake up at a different time, in a different place. Could you wake up as a different person? Bike Club is a story of a nameless protagonist who goes by the label of the narrator. The film portrays a battle within his own psyche, a journey of individuation. By psyche, I understand the totality of all psychic processes, conscious as well as the unconscious, Carl Jung. Fight Club, Individuation, The Shadow, and The Anima. What? Consumerist culture, coffee cups, and a condo packed with IKEA furniture? The narrator is obsessed with the material. He's a docile member of society, a sheep following social norms. Like so many others, I had become a slave. He wears the mask of society, the persona. He is inept at listening to the voice within. Therefore, he is struggling to fulfill his spiritual needs, living in an illusion of reality. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. His consciousness is bred from an ideal stance of a good life, making rational decisions without seeking clarity from within. A times B times C equals X. He is suppressing any innate desires from the unconscious. The narrative of the film could illustrate Carl Jung's theory of individuation. Jung stated, individuation means becoming an individual, and insofar as individuality embraces our innermost, last, and incomparable uniqueness, it also implies becoming one's own self. He must flee from the herd, voyage into the underworld, and discover his true self. The narrative of the film begins with the narrator unable to sleep. This seems to foreshadow his inability to integrate his unconscious desires into the psyche. His world is in disarray. When you have insomnia, you're never really asleep. And you're never really awake. He is in a state of limbo, living but not truly living. His reality is a lie. Limbo, according to mythology, means where a soul is stuck before its fate is decided. Will it be resurrected or banished to hell for eternity? He has reached crisis point, where action is needed to escape. After attending some testicular cancer support groups, he is finally able to get some shut-eye. However, his short state of equilibrium is quickly dismantled by the introduction of Marla Singer, who is, in fact, the projection of his anima. Marla is the spark that lights the fire of his unconscious. Marla, the anima, the in Jungian tourist, terms, represents the true the self reflected. rather than the image we present to others and serves as a primary source of communication with the unconscious. At first, he feels threatened by Marla. Marla's philosophy of life was that she might die at any moment. The tragedy, she said, was that she didn't. His philosophy is bounded in consumeristic constructs, therefore he is constricted in his ability to be free. However, he is simultaneously attracted to her, as she is the projection of one side of his own psyche. Carl Jung stated, when the animus and anima meet, the animus draws his sword of power, and the anima injects her poison of illusion and seduction. This reflects the initial relationship between the two of them. This event causes a split in his psyche, creating Tyler, the embodiment of everything he lacks. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. I look like you want to look, I fuck like you want to fuck, I am smart, capable, and most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you are not. It submerges him into the underworld of the unconscious. Tyler is his shadow. They are complete opposites. The narrator is a natural introvert. Tyler, a natural extrovert. They could be seen to represent the eternal hostile brothers. These representations have been seen throughout history. Cain and Abel, Satan and Christ, Romulus and Remus, Set and Osiris, Loki and Thor. It does seem it's a constant battle between these two forces. However, as the narrator realizes, they are both an integral part of him, and thus they must be intertwined together, forming a kind of dance. This seems to represent the symbol of yin and yang. Both elements of being merged, inseparable from each other forming a balance to life. For the remainder of the film, the narrator must learn how to integrate the characteristics of his shadow self, thus resulting in a more complete, psychologically healthy individual. We were finding something out.
The first step in the integration of his shadow self is his acceptance of the loss of property and valuables. Tyler blows up his condo. To reach individuation, he must differentiate himself from society by relinquishing his possessions. He needs to detach himself from the inauthentic life he is living and start again. His self is false and needs to be dismantled. As Tyler states, Self-improvement is masturbation and self-destruction. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Like Christ being resurrected. He can be born anew, challenging any prior beliefs he holds, and choose freedom in destruction. A destruction of all values, to find his own way, the way of individuation. After the demolition of his apartment, the two men move into an old abandoned house. They opt for an ascetic lifestyle, echoing famous Greek philosopher Diogenes the Cynic. He once said, this is a privilege of gods to want nothing, and godlike men to want little. Tyler realises that they do not need the material and are free without them. The things you own end up owning you. They are freed from the grip of materialism, let go from the leash, free to reign the wilderness, to discover their true natural desires. What desires? Well this can be found out shortly after their first meeting, where Tyler asked the narrator, How much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? Tyler personifies the unconscious energy that works to satisfy basic urges, needs and primal desires. This is clear to see through his animalistic instincts. He sees men having lost their way. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. The men need to get in touch with their true characteristics. A natural way to burn some calories, right? Well, in today's climate, fighting is regarded as an uncivilized act. In The Undiscovered Self, Jung states, separation from his instinctual nature inevitably plunges civilized man into the conflict between his conscious and unconscious, spirit and nature, knowledge and faith. In order to prevent these contradictions from happening, the narrator should immerse himself in the realm of primal feelings. The club, founded by his shadow Tyler, is expanding its influence on people, reaching out to their primitive form and provoking it, which is usually neglected by civilized societies. This is an important takeaway from the film. Emotions are real. Anger, lust, fear, the list goes on. We should not suppress these in any way. We should become who we are meant to be. It's important to embrace these feelings. In essence, these are what truly make us completely human. Film and literature display these front and centre. These stories are what completely make us. The journey of one man or woman conquering themselves. The stories never die. They are resurrected and eternal through time and space. The unconscious and conscious meet. Fight!